Hey, my dear lovely warriors, welcome to the Un Academy Need English channel. I hope I'm audible and visible, loud and clear. Yes, do let me know in the chat box. Looks like I am. Hello, Paul, Priya, Paul, Mohana, Arya. Nice to see all of you. Wonderful Wednesday to all of you. So sorry for the delay. My slides were not changing, and that's the reason why the class got delayed by four to five minutes. But uh, here we are on the channel and you guys are all excited to start the lecture number three of electric charges and fields, which is your chapter number one of class 12th physics. So your class 12th physics chapter one electric charges and fields. Today we are going to discuss everything about dipoles that is there in this particular chapter of your NCRT. And we'll also solve neat questions because obviously we have to crack the neat 2024 examination. So before we begin, make sure you smash that like button down there, hit the subscribe button, say hello to each other, stay motivated, say stay active throughout the chat and make friends, participate, enjoy, learn. That's what I would say. Hi Pandala, hi Kundala. Wow, such nice rhyming names you have. We have Priya Paul, we have Paul. Very good, very good. Nice to see. Shanti is also here. Yes, very nice guys. And yesterday I had given you certain homework in the previous lecture, lecture two of electric flux and uh, field. Very good, Dr. Astha, Gokul TV, uh, Khushbu Sharma, Josez, uh, Shama Sharma, very good. Uh, Sanjeev Sharma, very good, Indra. Uh, Ritik, very good, Jagdish, MPM 436, very good guys, congratulations for, uh, you know, getting the right answers and good that you guys are solving the questions right after the session is over. Keep it up, keep it up, keep it up, proud of all of you. Today also I'll be giving the homework, make sure you put it up immediately after the session is over. PDF is are going to be available in the Telegram channel. So make sure you join the Telegram channel, subscribe, share and like. Let's begin. Nice to see all of you. Hello Sanjeev. Hello Muhammad. Hi Vamsi. Yes, all our regular students. Very good. Very good. Keep it up. And guys, you should get your friends also along. Okay. So let us start talking about the concept of dipole. Okay. Come on guys. Simple logical question. What is the meaning of die? Not that do or die. Not that hey go waste fellow die. Not that. Yeah. So Arya Telegram link is there in description box. Niche mil jayega aapko. Okay. So you will get it down in the description box. Two right. Okay. Polarities. What are the polarities in an electric in a in electricity? What are the polarities? Pole. Pole means not that electric pole. Polarities that is positive and negative so dipole means two polarities as simple as that as simple as that two polarities two polarities that's how you can uh, visualize this but in stricter sense how do i define a dipole dipole a dipole is nothing but is nothing but two equal but opposite opposite charges charges separated by a small distance separated by a small distance that is what i call as a dipole in physics best example let's take an example obviously imagine there is a positive charge right over here and there is a negative charge over here is this going to be a dipole the answer for this question is obviously a big yes equal positive and negative charges but opposite in sign minus plus plus minus yes 5 coulomb and minus 7 coulomb will not become a dipole nope 7 coulomb and minus 7 coulomb perfect pair they say no Pairs are made in heaven. Dipoles are made with equal magnitudes but opposite signs. So that is Strasser's law. Okay. So this is how the pairing occurs, or this is how the dipoles. Oops, 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 oops. Okay. 
this is how we define dipoles now if i show the electric field lines this is how the electric field lines are going to look like obviously they start from positive charge and go towards negative charge so one of the electric field line will just go like this one of the electric field line will go just like this another field line will be coming from infinity on to the negative charge another field line will be coming again from infinity on that positive charge rest other field lines will be curved in nature like this like this maybe even like this right this is how the electric field lines will probably look around this particular electric dipole some of them will be even like this are 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 okay when second okay so i'm just showing few of the electric field lines understand there are more electric field lines which i have not shown over here this is how those electric field lines are going to look like okay i hope that is fine okay approximately i have shown them very good now there are two important lines axis in a dipole two important lines in a dipole first line which is very important is the line which joins these two charges so there is a line which basically joins these two particular charges that line that line that pink line which i am showing is called as the axial position or axial line from axial line okay very very important axis of the dipole means the line which connects the two charges the second line which is important is the perpendicular bisector perpendicular it is obviously perpendicular and it bisects them that means equally divides them into two parts that is the meaning of perpendicular bisect divides divides it into two parts that line is called as the equatorial position or equator or equator oops equator of that particular dipole everybody understood so there is equator and there is axis very good next important thing which you should know about electric dipole if i say that let's say for example let me just create another slide over here okay let me just take few of the things let me just put it over here okay and just say tata bye bye to other things okay now these charges if i give them some variables or names let's say this is plus q charge let's say this is minus q charge then the distance between these two charges the distance which is there between these two charges that is called as the length of the dipole and the length of the dipole is always used as the symbol 2a a is half the length so basically a is half the length so two times of half the length understand that each one is a and a so 2a is called as the length of the dipole what is it called my dear students length of the dipole so 2a sometimes some books also use l or maybe some symbol like d it's okay don't get confused if they tell you length of the dipole that means it is a distance between the two charges that's what you should know okay very good very good shafiq everybody is here now awesome length of the dipole all of you have understood the nomenclature dipole means two equal and opposite charges same magnitude field lines go from positive to negative positive to negative there is axial line there is equatorial line the charges are q and minus q distance of the dipole length of the dipole is 2a or l or d whatever name you want to use now we define something called as the dipole moment dipole moment now this is a vector quantity so dipoles strength is given by a term called as dipole moment now this dipole moment has a symbol of p with a bar over it because it is a vector quantity it is a vector quantity and the direction of the vector where does it go from plus to minus or minus to plus 
everybody will be like sir electric field lines go from plus to minus electric field lines go from plus to minus so dipole goes from minus to plus plus to minus minus to plus so understand this very clearly this vector's position is always from the negative polarity towards the positive polarity minus to plus every time i have seen many students get confused and they get exactly negative answer so be careful about this so my dear students in this particular diagram can you tell me is the dipole moment vector towards your right side or towards the left side spam in the chat box very good shafiq priya paul vishnu asta uh, mohana very good mohammad very good so come on guys think and tell me is the dipole moment towards the right side or towards the left side remember it is always from negative to positive hence the dipole moment the dipole moment will be towards the left side exactly very good shama suchi mama indra astha vishnu mohana shafiq very good bharat very good priya paul mohammad very good shanti excellent day now you might be like sir what is the strength of this what is the magnitude of it the magnitude of this particular dipole depends on the charge and the length if it is more it has more charge stronger dipole if it has more length stronger dipole so basically this is nothing but the charge into basically the distance which is basically 2a essentially i would say it is any one charge any one of those charges okay magnitude obviously multiplied by the length of the dipole multiplied by the length of the dipole that is how strictly i will define it is that very clear i should also highlight this at this particular moment because this is a formula okay now my dear students can you guys think clearly and tell me what should be the unit of what should be the unit of dipole moment what should be the unit of dipole moment si unit think charge is there length is there charge is there length is there charge is in coulomb charge is in coulomb okay length is in meter so it will be coulomb meter coulomb into meter that is that unit very good so coulomb meter is the answer for that excellent now because dipole moment is a vector quantity probably i should also teach you a little bit of chemistry because it is related to it have you learned the structure of h2o water molecule the most one of the most abundant molecule on earth guys h2o so you have basically the oxygen and you have the hydrogen and then the hydrogen right over here everybody would have studied hurry oh, hurry hurry why is it not straight this molecule everybody would have also studied that oxygen has delta negative two times charge hydrogen hydrogen has the delta positive charge so if i were to put some charges on it i would put some small positive charge on hydrogen i would also put some small positive charge on hydrogen and delta two negative on oxygen now my dear students can you see dipoles in fact i can see two dipoles come on come on think about it yes shama that will come in gauss's law and application okay don't worry about it yeah can you see two dipoles yes i want i can see two dipoles what are those two dipoles i can see one dipole from here to here let's say i will call it as p1 and another dipole from here to here very good guys very good guys this also magnitude wise will be p1 only direction wise it is different okay or if you want i will put it as p2 magnitude wise p1 is equal to p2 yes so i can see two dipoles oh now i know what to do if i have two dipoles if i have two dipoles like this i can do their vector addition i can do their vector addition and the resultant will come downwards like this the resultant 
is definitely going to come like this this is basically how the net dipole moment will look like downwards guys everybody with me this is the net dipole moment hence i will say this water molecule has a net dipole moment in this particular direction this is the net dipole moment of that particular molecule of water molecule of water molecule okay now that you understand this i have a one more interesting chemistry question for all of you do you know the structure of carbon dioxide do you know the structure of carbon dioxide you know how h2o water molecule is do you know the structure of carbon dioxide molecule guys there is carbon yeah come on let's see if you guys can put it up in the chat box very good ram kumar was the first one it is a linear molecule it is a linear molecule so my dear students won't their dipole moments cancel out each other won't their dipole moments cancel out each other so dipole moments cancel out each other dipole moments cancel therefore can i say net dipole moment net electrical dipole moment will be how much very good zero so that is why we are treating it like vector quantities excellent hey guys see everything is related many students think that to crack neat you need physics chemistry biology no you don't need physics chemistry biology you need smartness you need common sense you need to understand logically you need to relate things you need to be active you need to be smart these are the qualities that you need and you can see physics is just in the textbook chemistry is just in the textbook but actually in reality everything is related to each other even biology is related to physics mathematics is related to biology maths is related to chemistry everywhere understand so when you study them in harmony and that's what i generally try to do with my students because that's when they develop interest and they understand a better picture of that particular subject okay and i hope you are loving all these explanations and to show your love and support you know what to do smash the like button down there and if you are new to the channel smash the subscribe button very good guys so i have put up all the notes from ncert as well apart from my handwritten notes all right so you can go through this uh, definitely after the class as well so all the things what i have explained dipole axis is there equatorial axis is there dipole's length is there dipole moment is a vector quantity what is the definition of dipole everything has been mentioned okay let's do a question guys beautiful question neat question coming up on your screen let's see who are the first ones to do it so 11th yes sanjana i'll be doing 11th standard uh, chapters uh, next week anyways this week i'm starting with 11th standard chapter in the avenger batch right so i have already planned one more 11th standard class i think on friday on fun with graphs everybody can attend it obviously 12th dropper where we are going to study mathematical graphs basic maths part it is slopes different curves how to draw graphs how to understand how to interpret everything okay so that is on friday do not forget to attend that okay my dear students try to solve this particular question so here we have three charges on the vertices of an equilateral triangle so let's start by drawing an equilateral triangle so charges are basically plus q plus q and minus 2q this is how the charges are i do not see the dipole so quickly so what i will do i will just play around with this a little bit and probably then i will see the dipole how guys observe carefully okay observe <clears throat> can i split that minus 2q charge into two negative q charges one minus q over here one minus q over here at the same place but splitting it into two negative charges now do you see dipoles now are you able to see dipoles i think so from minus to plus there is one electrical dipole here from minus to plus there is another electrical dipole here if i call the dipole moment p1 over here this is also a p1 magnitude wise and each of this p1 each of this p1 will be charged into the length what is the length of separation 
what is the length of separation that is basically the side length do not put 2a over here what will you put a why a because a is the length remember 2a was just a symbol which was used there when a was half the length here a is the complete length so do not put 2a that is a common mistake understood Achha. now what is the next point you have to find the resultant you have to find the net dipole moment okay i know one more thing the total angle is how much 60 degrees total angle is 60 degrees so i know what to do the net dipole moment i will use this formula root of a square plus b square plus 2ab cos theta so what is a a is basically p1 so b is also p1 plus 2 into a into b into cos of 60 i can see p1 square is common everywhere so i'll take p1 square common okay then 1 plus 1 plus 2 cos 60 is basically half root of p1 square is just p1 inside the root i have 1 plus 1 plus 1 which is basically 3 so in the next step my dear students i'm just going to find that net dipole moment by substituting the value of p1 which is qa so it will be qa root 3 qa root 3 where is it yep option a i believe option a i believe yes that's the correct answer very good shafi very good very good shanti awesome no rankumar it is not b it is a yes priya paul very good mohana very good umba Asta, very good awesomeness understood how to solve this good question first identify the dipoles make those dipoles then you realize it's a vector so you need to do vector addition i know if there are two vectors making certain angle i will use the formula root of a square plus b square plus 2ab cos theta substitute and in the end substitute the value of p1 in the end you have to substitute the value of p1 that's all all right so that was this particular question let's see if you can solve this previous year question as well polar molecules polarity molecules which have polarity are the molecules which have i think if you have been with me for the last five ten minutes you will able you will be definitely be able to answer this yep come on think 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 yes so soft copy streather it will always be soft copies or it will be on the dashboard practice question bank will be on the dashboard and the study practice whatever it will be pdf form or whatever it will be always the soft copy yes okay all right it will be more like practice sheets and all of that and will also recommend you books either yes d pakka 100 percent guarantee d for what hey come on just don't say d yeah. it is not fun d for what D for, see, Dr. Asta, hint. D for Dr. Asta. That's your hint, guys. See, one Dr. Ruby is also there. Very good. Now you should start putting it up. D for dog. D for Delhi. Who are these people? Yeah. What is your aim? Diamond. Guys, you should only think about one thing. Doctor. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Very good. Molecules which have permanent dipole moment, like the one which I showed you right over here for h2o molecule it has a net dipole moment so that's why it is called as a polar molecule polar molecule okay rest of the options will not match it acquires dipole moment in the presence of something else no it should always have whether other things are there or not there it should always have that's why that word permanent is very important okay it's not b bacha and it acquires dipole moment when something is absent it has zero dipole moment is not true it should always have that net polarity very good now let's slowly go to the next part and what is that next part the next part is finding the field because of an electric dipole and if i may cast per myself out here you will see that wherever i was hiding or rather what was hiding behind me there is already some electric field lines right at the bottom right corner apart from the trial part yeah you can see that right over here yes that is how the electric field lines uh, look like let me just get myself back i don't want to be invisible ghost okay yes 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 electric potential will be in the capacitance chapter definitely so my dear students we know that there is electric field around a dipole. I want to know how much this field is. 
I want to know how much this field is. Okay, let's do this. Let's take this is positive charge. Then this length is 2A and then you have this negative charge right like this okay now we all know that the electric field lines will be oops something like this like this like this like this like this right this is how the electric field lines are going to look like there will be more but i'm not showing all of them of course because it will become too crowded they will again come back also like this okay now my question to you is this where do you think the electric field will be stronger where do you think the electric field will be stronger in the actual position or in the equatorial position in the actual position or on the equatorial position just look at the field diagrams and then tell me i think last lecture if you attended you would know this wherever the field lines are crowded crowded close it's strong wherever it is far it is weak if you notice one thing very clearly at these positions the field lines have gone far away from each other whereas over here you can see they are very close their separation is little bit less their separation is definitely less over here so definitely it is stronger on the axis than on the equator so that's the first conclusion that i will draw the field the field is definitely stronger stronger on the axis than the equator than the equator now imagine i take any random point from the center of the dipole i take any random point from the center of the dipole this is basically my position vector this is basically my position of that point where i want to find the field at that particular point the field is in this particular direction the field is in this particular direction the position vector makes an angle theta the position vector makes an angle theta so my dear students can you guys quickly tell me for axial position and for equatorial position for axial position and for equatorial position what will be the value of theta my dear students what will be the value of theta for axial position come on my dear students obviously this point should be on this line should be on this particular line so therefore this r will be on this line what will be that angle theta zero or even 180 because even if r is over here towards your right side imagine r increases 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 and becomes like this so total theta will become 180 so theta will be basically zero degree or 180 degrees everybody agrees with this everybody agrees with this whereas for equatorial position i think you can take anywhere on this line so it will be either plus 90 or minus 90 so i can say theta will be basically plus or minus 90 degree everybody with me everybody with me understood or clear -o? awesomeness now another point if you are on the actual position if you are on the actual position let's say for example you are here okay you are basically here you can see that arrow mark you are somewhere over here the electric field is parallel to r check this out electric field at this location you can see how the electric field lines are it is parallel to the direction of r in fact even if you go over here okay if you go over here just check this out what will happen what will happen over here guys then what happens over here your r is on this side your r is on this side but the electric field is towards your left side electric field is towards your left side everybody agrees very good 
सो कीप दीज थिंग्स इन माइंड डिपेंड्स ऑन वेच साइड यू आर ऑटोमैटिकली ऑटोमैटिकली और फील्ड कैन बी पैरल और एंटी पैरल टू आर कैन बी पैरल और ऑपोजिट टू आर ओके वन मोर थिंग इफ यू आर एनी वेयर ऑन द इक्वेटर इफ यू आर एनी वेयर ऑन द इक्वेटर आई फील द इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड इज ऑलवेज टूवर्ड्स दिस साइड इज ऑलवेज टूवर्ड्स दिस साइड एंड इट इज डेफिनेटली ऑपोजिट टू द डायपोल मूवमेंट लुक एट दैट डायपोल मूवमेंट इज ऑलवेज टूवर्ड्स योर लेफ्ट साइड डायपोल मूवमेंट विल बी डेफिनेटली टूवर्ड्स योर लेफ्ट साइड so it is always always you will see on the equator it's opposite to the dipole moment anti parallel but on the axis it is always parallel to the always parallel to the dipole moment look at that anywhere on the axis okay if you are here or if you are here you will see it is parallel to the dipole moment so here on the axial position can i say that electric field is parallel to the dipole moment is parallel to the dipole moment but on the equatorial position can i say electric field is anti parallel to the dipole moment everybody understood this clear everybody understood this is that very 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 clear awesome 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 clear awesome now we'll find out this formula okay we want to find out what is that field on the axis or on the equator all these are important pointers i am going very smooth systematically so that there is no confusion so we have discussed that the field is strong on the axis field on the axis is parallel whereas on the equator is anti parallel that is also very obvious from this particular diagram so let's try to find the field on the axis of a dipole so for that let me just take one positive charge over here and this is a this is a and then you have negative q charge all right then from the center of the dipole i will just take a point over here and at this particular point just one second yeah at this particular point i want to find out what is the electric field i want to find out what is that electric field okay that's the whole objective i want to find what is that electric field at this location r from the center of that particular dipole okay now i can also clearly see that the dipole moment is towards the left side so i'll just put p vector towards the left side i know that okay p vector is towards the left side now do you see that for finding the electric field on the axial position r is much much larger by the way r is very large because generally the value of a is very very small remember always when i said dipole i when i define it i said the length of the dipole is generally very small so r is much larger so if a is 1 mm r will be 100 cm so they are you know can't be compared they are very very far apart okay this net electric field this net electric field which is there what do you think my dear students will it come because of the positive charge or will it come because of the negative charge or both i feel it will come because of both of them it will come because of both of them come on guys concentrate on the class keep answering keep scribbling yeah yes it will be because of both right the positive charge will give the field here the negative charge will give a field towards the right side positive will push negative will pull positive will push towards that left side negative will pull so can i say it is nothing but electric field due to positive charge minus electric field due to negative charge okay i hope this is very very clear now what is that electric field due to positive charge for that i just need this distance how much is this distance going to be look at this this total is a from here to here is a 
so my dear students this much remaining will be this total distance minus a that will be that remaining distance so while finding the field because of the positive charge should i not say it is k into q divided by distance is nothing but r minus a whole square everybody understood everybody understood clear till this point minus because of the negative charge now look at the negative charge that is at this distance from that particular point that whole distance is this distance plus this distance a is going to give me this complete distance this distance plus this distance is going to give me this complete distance so the distance will be r plus a so can i not say this is nothing but k q do not put minus q guys because i have already taken into account that the field will be pulling it so is this is just the magnitude of the fields okay the field because of the positive charge minus the field because of the negative charge when i subtract them i get the remaining net resultant field so k q by r plus a whole square r plus a whole square now i can see i can take few terms common so i can take k q common and what i am left with is all these things r minus a whole square into r plus a whole square on the top i will have r plus a whole square because i have taken lcm minus r minus a whole square i have just taken lcm nothing else i have just taken lcm so r plus a will go first on the top r minus a will go later on on the top subtract them now let's see what happens next so this will be k q let's open up the numerator it will be r square plus a square plus 2 r a minus minus r square plus a square minus 2 r a okay this whole thing divided by now look at the denominator guys r minus a r plus a a minus b a plus b isn't it an identity a plus b a minus b isn't it an identity what is that identity a plus b into a minus b is a square minus b square it's a square minus b square so shouldn't this be nothing but you know r square minus a square but it is there two times square of that also so that's why square because this two and this two is there that's why i am to square it everybody following it till this point okay now observe what happens next now observe what happens next so the net electric field will be observe k q is there as it is denominator has r square minus a square square in the numerator side many things are going to get cancelled like this r square will get cancelled with this r square can you see that r square r square cancels this a square will get cancelled with this a square but 2 ra this minus and this minus will become plus and it will become 4 ra uh, 2 ra and 2 ra will become 4 ra so on the top should i not put this as 4 times of ra 4 times of ra everybody find till this point now comes the next important thing r is much much larger than a so if r is bigger than a come on guys think about it if i do 100 square minus 0.1 square isn't it same as saying 100 square only 100 square minus 0.1 square isn't it same as saying 100 square only so can i just not neglect can i just not neglect that a square term so what will it become my dear students it will become k q into 4 times r a divided by r squares square because r is much much larger than a yes very good next step what will it be guys look at it k q okay k q i will write 4 r a like this i will just write 4 r a like this 4 is 2 into 2 so i'll write 2 k q okay into 2 a into r whole thing divided by r raised to 4 it's the same thing i just split it up 
Why I have split it up? You will understand it in the next step. Why did I do it? Observe this part. What is this Q into 2A? What is this Q into 2A? Deliberate attempt to simplify it, my dear students. I know that term is just the dipole moment and this R will cancel with this. It will become 3. So it will become 2KP divided by R cube. So that is the field on the axial position. So I feel we should definitely block this up. Yes, so that's the formula. 2KP divided by R cube. Understood the derivation, my dear students? Isn't it simple? If you go step by step, everything you understood. Now, can we do the same thing for equatorial? Yes. For equatorial also, the logic is very similar. I'll just give you a heads up. You can try it out at your home and you can send me on telegram if you get through it or if you're stuck through it for any reason. So I'll just uh, give you a small starting point so that you can start with the derivation at home. So that's your homework, my dear students. You take some random point over here. Okay, let's say this is R and over here, you find the electric field because of this positive charge, it will be towards this side because of the positive charge, it will be like this. The negative charge will pull that point like this towards this side over here. Okay. So there will be another electric field, which I need to show in this particular direction. So there will be two electric fields, one because of the positive charge this way, this way, and one because of the negative charge this way. So my dear students, can you guess what will happen because of their vector addition, the resultant, where, would, where do you think it will come out to be? I think their vector addition will come out to be in this side. It will come out to be in this side that is over here. And you can assume, assume the angles, my dear students. Okay. And then start solving the question. All right. So you can assume this is theta. You can assume this is theta and then start solving the question. This is also going to be theta. Then this is also going to be theta and then solve it. Make that approximation R is much, much larger. You will get the answer. The formula on the equator comes out to be like this. I'll just give the final answer over here. It will come out to be K times P divided by R cube. K times P divided by R cube. Notice the similarity and one small difference in this formula with the previous formula. Here I got KP by R cube. Here it is 2KP by R cube. Does it make sense? Does it make sense? I think so. On the equator, the field is less. On the axis, the field is more. That's why that number 2 is there. Isn't that the same thing which I told you before? Field is stronger on the axis than the equator. So that's why on the axis, you will get that 2. Whereas on the equator, there is no 2. There is only 1. Exactly. Okay. So that's one common thing. Some people also li uh, like to write it in the vector form. Don't get scared by it. See, I gave you one clear indication over here only. On the axis, the field is parallel. On the equator, it is anti-parallel. So even if you try to write it in the vector form, my dear students, it will look something like this. Electric field on the axis in that vector form, because it is parallel, it will be 2K by R cube P bar because the direction of P bar and electric field is parallel. So just you can put bar on both sides, but only on equator. I know it will be opposite. So if I have to put it in vector form, it will be E equatorial will be K divided by R cube. But here I will have to put a minus sign here. I'll have to put a minus sign because I know it is anti parallel. That's the only difference understood in vector form. Everybody clear about this. Everybody clear about this. Okay. So these are the two important formulas, which you should definitely know. I have put up the slides also in the same thing over here. 
shall i give you a bonus formula shall i give you a bonus formula very rarely it is used but still i'm just giving it to you if you have a dipole like this this is plus this is minus and you know that the dipole moment is in this particular direction i go to some random point let's say r this is basically theta at that location i want to find what is the electric field i want to find what is the electric field in general in general and what is the direction of it so let's say that electric field makes an angle alpha the electric field makes an angle alpha okay so that formula goes like this the electric field at any point r is the distance theta is the angle is given by just put kp by r cube first kp by r cube first then on the top just put 3 cos square theta plus 1 this will always work think how for axis for axial position theta was 0 for equator theta was 90 degree okay let's try it out let's try it out so guys when you put axial position theta will be 0 so the root term will become 3 cos square 0 3 cos square 0 plus 1 cos 0 is basically 1 only so it will become 3 plus 1 which is root of 4 which is 2 so that number 2 will come that number 2 will come very good shafiq that number 2 will come but if you put equatorial position theta will become 90 degree i know cos of 90 cos of 90 is basically nothing but 0 so this will just become 0 plus 1 which is root of 1 which is 1 it makes sense on the equator it is 1 time kp by r cube on equator sorry on axis it is 2 times kp by r cube wow this is a god formula so i feel that one must definitely remember this because this is more general god formula this is awesome formula this is not just that i will also give you the formula for tan alpha guys the value of the value of tan of alpha the value of tan of alpha let me just put it over here the value of tan of alpha is very simple it is just tan of theta divided by 2 tan of theta divided by 2 that's all that's about it so these are the two important formulas for all of you tan alpha is tan theta by 2 that's it okay so keep these things in mind for neat perspective in boards they will not ask but in neat they can ask the application direct substitution based question so quick revision field is stronger on the axis than on the equator field is parallel on the axis field is anti parallel on the equator field on the equator is 2k sorry on the axis is 2kp by r cube field on the equator is kp by r cube generic formula for field and the direction is also discovered okay so i have given that to you all the other theory pointers are mentioned which is there in your ncert let us start solving some questions the ratio of the electric field on the equator to the axial position everybody should do this i don't want even one single student to get this wrong everybody should answer this come on i want everybody starting to spam in the chat box everybody come on my dear students what is the ratio of the electric field on the equator to the axial position priyanka saying b shafiq saying b dr ask the saying b interesting go these kind of questions have come in cbsc in ncr i need many competitive exams on the axis there is a formula of 2 kp by r cube whereas on the equator it is just kp by r cube so the axis upon the equator is 2 is to 1 the question is the ratio of the electric field on the equator to the equ uh, equatorial therefore the electric field on the equator upon the axial position will be exactly opposite so it will be 1 by 2 1 by 2 option b b b b b very good very good boys and girls awesome 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 proud of you you guys were attentive 
you guys have understood this let us move to the next killer question electric field on the axis of a dipole is 8 volt per meter as a unit of electric field then at a point which is double the distance from that dipole the field will be how much in value so you have doubled that distance think about it what is going to happen so there was a dipole maybe like this and maybe you were at certain distance from it okay initially this was point one this was in the first scenario now in the second scenario you have basically doubled that distance you have doubled that distance so what do you think will happen i think we should go with the formula of electric dipole uh, field on the axis it is nothing but k p by r cube interestingly i can see the actual field is inversely proportional to the cube of the distance so therefore e2 divided by e1 why e2 divided by e1 because i want to find the old field with respect to that new field will be nothing but r1 by r2 whole cube but wait a minute i know if original distance was r the next distance r2 will be 2r whole cube e2 i do not know e1 was given to be 8 volts per meter so i'm just going to put 8 over here so e2 by 8 is equal to r and r will get cancelled r and r will get cancelled so 1 by 2 cube is basically 1 by 8 even 8 will get cancelled and i will get e2 as 1 volt per meter is that answer d everybody saying d somebody said c first no it is not c it is option d oops i think the answer marked over here is also wrong wow very good somebody did the same mistake over there so guys the answer is one volt per meter yes that's the correct answer very good very good very good okay awesome understood it is inversely proportional to the cube of the distance cube of the distance not square okay a lot of students think it is square and that's why they get the answer as two and that is wrong i know arjit that is a common 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 mistake okay don't worry problem solved let's move to the next concept and that is dipole inner field understand the difference yes safnan you can definitely crack neat if you start now because so many of the avengers students are going to start with us the journey for neat 2024 and we are guaranteeing that you will get into aims you will get into gmc you will get into fmc if you follow everything that we are saying 100 percent results guys there is no doubt about it i don't doubt myself why should you doubt yourself why should i doubt you why should you doubt me nobody is going to doubt we trust each other that bond is very strong we have full faith students have full faith in us i have full faith in the students we are going to kill it guys yes talk it to gmc shanti next year you will be definitely pinging me on telegram or instagram sir see my coat sir see this government college sir see the campus and i'll be like good yeah good very good and now, now the difference understand see if you take a charge it creates a field around it if you take a charge it creates a field around it okay some other charge will also create a field around it some another charge will also create a field around it. Some another charge will also create a field around it. Imagine there is a field. Imagine there is a field, electric field. In that, you take a dipole. That field is not because of the dipole. That dipole will create its own field. That's a different story. But you are placing the dipole in somebody else's field understood so we are going to study the effects of it there are two cases uniform and non-uniform but the formula is only for uniform we are just going to do qualitative analysis of non-uniform field do you understand the difference between qualitative and quantitative qualitative and quantitative in physics you would have done that in chemistry 
so qualitative means just understanding how it affects whether it increases decreases in this direction in that direction oh it is like this that's all quantitative means formula acha what is the exact value what is the torque formula what is the force formula what is the direction what is the value everything that's the difference so qualitatively we'll discuss non uniform quantitatively we will discuss uniform great awesomeness now let's see if you guys can understand this i have an electric dipole in over here let's say like this that means this is your positive charge this is your negative charge i place it like this also this is your positive charge this is your negative charge all right i will place it maybe like this as well this is your positive charge this is your negative charge and now i place some external field not its own field because of somebody else let us just say let us just say there is electric field lines passing like this these are your electric field lines there is one electric field line passing like this there is let's say electric field line passing like this this is definitely non uniform field guys okay these are your electric field lines let's look at it case by case in the first case in that first case do you see how the forces will act do you see how the forces will act on the positive charge that electric field will give rise to a force in the same direction that will be the force on the positive charge similarly on the negative charge on the negative charge the force will be opposite to the field it will be opposite to the field yes or no so definitely it will be in this particular direction it will be in this particular direction this will be the force on that negative charge do you think these forces cancel each other no right i don't think so one force is here another force is here i think they are not opposite they are making certain angle so i feel that the net force is not zero i don't see that the net force is zero everybody with me everybody with me okay now this also let me show you more field lines so that you get an idea okay this is a non uniform electric field okay now if you look at the second case very interesting many students make a mistake observe on the positive charge the force will be towards the right side in the direction of the field on the negative charge on the negative charge the force will be towards the left side so f minus over here now what do you think will the net force be zero or not zero let's see if you guys can answer this na you are real genius here yeah? come on one force is here one force is here what do you think my dear students will will the net force be zero or not zero one force on the positive is here one force on the negative is zero so totally what do you think shafiq saying not zero why so why so because the problem is the magnitude of the forces are not same understand that force on the negative charge in this case is more than the force on the positive charge because here the field is strong because of the density here the field is weak because of less density so the force on the negative charge is more than the positive charge hence the net force acting on it is not zero is not zero same thing i can go about over here in the third case on the positive charge let's say the force is this way on the negative charge the force is this way so again the net force is not zero everybody with me everybody with me very good now what about the torque do you remember torque is the twisting action twisting force look at the first case one force is here one force is here don't you see that the dipole will be tilted it will try to turn it's just like you pushing something and pulling something one body one person is pulling here one person is pulling here don't you see that the dipole will turn my dear students i feel that there is a torque involved over here can you see that i think there is a torque involved over here definitely the torque is not zero similarly even in the third case can you see one force is there one force is here won't those two forces create a torque create a torque 
Shanti, which part is not zero? This one, the third one, look at this. One force is here, one force is here. Won't they cancel? No, because they are not 180 degrees. So that's why the net force is not zero. Here also, even though they are opposite, their magnitudes are not same. One is three Newton, one is two Newton, three and two. Although they are opposite, they will not cancel because the magnitudes are different. Hence, it is not zero, even in the second case. Yes, Dinkar, tomorrow the Avenger batch starts. Can you see that there will be a torque here also, my dear students? Here also there will be a torque. Everybody with me? Achha. Now this is a brilliant question. Here in the second case, can you guys think and tell me whether the net torque will be zero or not zero? If you answer this now, you are brilliant. If you answer this, you are brilliant. Come on. What do you think? Is the torque zero or not zero? First, and the third case, I saw that the torque is not zero. The torque is there in the first or the third case. What about the second case, my dear students? Come on, think. I feel that the torque is big fat zero. It is not not zero, guys. Wrong. Why? You might question. Reason is simple. One force is like this. Another force is also like that. They are collinear collinear when two forces are along the same line they can't turn it only when there is a separation they can turn it just imagine na? imagine this phone was there one person pushes it here one person pushes it here same line along that same line if you push it obviously it will not turn but one person pushes from the top one person pushes from below then it will turn then it will turn understood clear so that is the concept building. That is why I'm explaining each and every single thing. Next year, when you write NEAT, before writing NEAT, you will be so pakka in physics. That is my guarantee, guys. Because I go from the basics and explain the concept. You will not by heart anything unless it is necessary, like facts or formulas. But everything else, concepts can't be by hearted. Concepts have to be understood. You have to train those neurons in your head. Okay. So what is the conclusion? Basically, in a non-uniform field, in a non-uniform field, net force, I would say, net force, net force may act on it definitely it can act you can say it is not zero and even net torque may act on it definitely torque can be zero or non-zero it is definitely possible exactly everybody cool about this point but let's take the concept of uniform electric field let me just draw a diagram of uniform electric field now imagine this this is a dipole now this is a positive charge this is a negative charge i have a uniform electric field this is uniform electric field like this like this now things will be little different my dear students okay my dear students the concept okay over here you will see it slightly different you will see the conclusions will be slightly different on the positive charge on the positive charge the force will be oops the force will be towards the right side on the negative charge the force will be towards the left side don't you see although they are opposite they are also equal why because the field is same because it is uniform field so it is uniform field so definitely the force on the positive charge is equal to the force on the negative charge and they cancel each other therefore therefore it implies that the net force is definitely a big fat zero okay one and a half hour ILN. okay one and a half hour everybody with me the net force is a big fat zero awesome that is one conclusion what about the torque what about the torque i think there is a torque acting on it I think there is a torque acting on it definitely and the torque will be there in certain positions certain positions it will not be there in fact you can see that right over here 
if i show the dipole like this along the field along the field or if i show the dipole opposite to the field if i show the dipole opposite opposite to the field you will see that in each of these cases in the first case theta is basically zero okay this is that theta theta is basically zero in this particular case theta is basically 180 degrees come on my dear students think about this just one second let me all arrange this okay so in these cases i feel that the torque acting on it is zero the torque acting on it is zero because both the forces are along the same line here also the torque acting will be zero because both the forces will be along the same line it won't be able to rotate it it will pull it from both sides imagine this pen being pulled from both sides it will not rotate you need it at an angle you need it at an angle so very very important cases i would say so maybe i should even block this particular case i should also block this particular case okay all these are important cases but for a general theta for a general theta i think that torque can be found and that torque comes out as that torque comes out as this formula observe this the torque comes out as uh, q into the dipole length which is basically 2a into e into sine theta this is the final result which comes after you find the torque using r cross f now don't worry about the derivation part because derivation is not so important for need mainly do you see that there are certain things which can be clubbed together to write it as a different variable like this variable q and 2a together becomes actually p that is e and then this is basically sine theta now the moment i look at this i realize that wait a minute i have a vector over here which is p i have another vector which is e and the angle between them is theta and torque which is also a vector comes out to be vector a vector b sine theta that reminds me of the cross product vector product vector multiplication so why not write it in the vector form and this will become p cross e basically p cross e the earlier equation is just the magnitude this one is a proper vector equation so you can remember both it's one and the same thing just writing it in magnitude form or in vector form so this is the cross product of it cross or uh, you know vector product you can say very important formula everybody with me understood or clear or can we move ahead oh yep everyone awesome so what and all we discussed in a non-uniform field net force may act net torque may also act but in a uniform field okay so this one is basically uniform field so maybe i can just put it over here so in uniform field this is very very important this is that keyword over here uniform field the previous one it was non-uniform field okay so in the uniform field the net force is always zero okay the net force is always zero every time but the net torque may be zero or may not be zero net torque net torque may act may act on that particular dipole okay so keep these things in mind all right all right all right very good i think we should solve some questions are you guys ready sprite clear says everybody say shanti what about everybody else sprite or no sprite sprite everyone sprite means all clear understood oh clear oh let's move ahead yep ready for some problems very good priya paul also says sprite clear very good guys keep it up these formulas are very important i have given you every single detail about a dipole and i have also put pointers for all of you guys in the form of these uh, notes
for all of you okay so all these things have been put right over here this is blank page not needed okay let's see if you guys can solve this question there is a dipole at an angle of 30 degree in a non-uniform field then the dipole will experience come on in a non-uniform field it is at 30 degrees with the field will it translate will it rotate will it do none or will it do both come on think about it and answer in the chat box everybody should be able to get this it's not difficult i feel come on come on come on come on come on my dear students will it rotate will it translate draw the diagram draw the diagram this is a dipole making 30 degrees with the electric field but this electric field is non-uniform this electric field is non-uniform keep this in mind so on the positive charge maybe the force will be like this so on the positive charge maybe the force is like this but on the negative charge maybe the force is going to be like this so don't you see that the forces acting on them are not cancelling but there could be a torque acting on it so there is torque but i don't uh, huh, I, there is a torque and the forces are also not cancelling so there is a net force also so i think it should be c yes you can clearly notice that over here that there is definitely a torque acting on it torque is not zero in fact even the value of the net force is not zero so there is definitely translation translation is going to occur even because of the torque rotation is also going to occur so both of those things are going to be there which is option c everybody can see that option c very good very good very good so that's how you should do analysis okay i've explained you everything now in this problem next question need 2021 let's see if you guys can ca uh, crack this particular question if you had written the need 2021 examination a dipole is inside an electric field as shown look at this plus q minus q electric field is towards your right side then in which direction will it move where do you think it will move look at the electric field lines they are radially outwards so guys think about it where do you think it will move towards the right towards the left towards the right towards the left but potential energy increases decreases okay beautiful beautiful everybody saying c is that so pakka right 100 percent guarantee lock kya jai Achha. let's see guys you guys are correct yeah c for captain shreya sir in fact that is my, also my instagram handle in case you want to get in touch with me make sure you can uh, message me on captain underscore shreyas on telegram or on instagram so that's my handle same thing everywhere even on twitter everywhere guys okay so my dear students over here if you notice this positive charge is in the stronger part of the field this is the stronger part of the field this is the weaker part of the field because the lines are far away so stronger field means stronger force so the force on the positive charge will be stronger whereas on the negative charge it will be smaller now because f positive is more than f negative you will see that the net force will be towards the right side will be towards the right side bigger force minus smaller force bigger force wins obviously so that's why it will move towards the right side this is one thing now this option also has right this option also has right how do i decide potential energy increases or decreases i'll give you a general rule this is a trick shortcut trick which you can keep in mind every time you are sad okay you are sad you are after some time happy guys everybody wants to go from sadness to happiness or from happiness to sadness please answer this don't get this wrong now if you are sad you want to become happy or if you are happy you want to become sad obviously everybody wants to go from sadness to happiness agree common rule wow shanti i like your answer yeah such a amazing answer very good i loved that answer yeah very good so everybody wants to go from from sadness to happiness very nice now now imagine you are climbing up a hill 
you are climbing up a hill you are on the top of a building you are climbing on a chair okay imagine these activities versus you are sitting relaxed on a chair you are sleeping on the ground you are lying on the floor which is happy i know you will be like sir on the mountain i will see beautiful views forget that for a moment energy wise let's talk about it lying on a couch lying on a floor sleeping on the bed below versus climbing on a mountain climbing on a chair standing on a stool obviously while you are taking rest you will be happy no relaxed position so when you are relaxed your energy is less or more when you are relaxed your energy don't talk about that biological energy your potential energy is less or more less right but the moment you climb up you stand on something your potential energy increases so my dear students when you are sad potential energy is basically higher when you are happy potential energy is basically lower and every object every system wants to go from higher energy to lower energy state higher energy to lower energy state if you drop a ball the ball falls below naturally because high energy to low energy understood so my dear students what will the dipole try to do it will try to reduce its potential energy it wants to be happy no it wants to be happy so that's the reason why the potential energy decreases is that clear is that understood because it is a natural process it's not artificial you're not deliberately pushing it it's going on its own if anything goes on its own it will always try to be happy clear moving on to the next question coming up on your screen probably this is the last question all right two charges separation field line joining makes 30 then the torque acting on it is okay let's use the torque formula the torque formula is p e sin theta but dipole moment is charge into the length of separation into e into sin theta i think now we should just substitute it charge is 3 milli coulomb okay charge is basically 3 milli coulomb milli is 10 to the power minus 3 into separation is 2 centimeters so it is 2 into 10 to the power minus 2 electric field my dear students is nothing but 4 into basically sine of 30 degrees agreed okay so let's see what happens 3 twos are 6 6 fours are 24 so i will get 24 over here here i will get 10 to the power minus 5 and sine 30 is basically half so 24 by 2 is 12 and into 10 to the power minus 5 newton meter so that's the value of the torque exactly 12 into 10 to the power minus 5 as simple as that okay everybody with me clear oh that's how questions can come even in the need or even in the board examination if this is value based great now let me just give you a brief heads up about charge distribution okay because that will be needed for the next class this is the introduction of the next class i will not do this in the next class but this is very important charge distribution imagine i charge a body the charge gets distributed usually to find the electric field usually to find the electric field at any point what i will have to do is because of each and every charge i will have to find the field oh because of this charge this is the field because of this charge this is the field oh because of this charge okay this is the field okay because of this charge okay this is the field so like that because of each and every charge okay yeah because of each and every charge right over here i will have to find their respective contributions in the field and then and then after finding the fields because of every one of them i will find their resultant field i will find their resultant field so this electric field is the summation of 
the smaller electric fields these electric fields are the contributions contribution this is basically the contribution contribution due to elemental elemental charges due to elemental charges sum of all of that correct everybody with me but if there are many such things many point charges imagine a sphere which is charged thousands millions of charges will be there so when there are countless charges then instead of summation the right thing to do will be what should you replace it with obviously with integration so that delta will become d so this is how it will transform when there is a continuous this is for continuous continuous a charge distribution continuous charge distribution here in the previous one when i used delta and summation i knew there were 100 charges there were five charges there were three charges but continuously like a paste the charges are spread then i will have to do integration to find the net field now when you describe the charge distribution on this body there are three ways of doing it depending on the shape of the body now there are three different categories 1d 2d and 3d simply put 1d 2d and 3d that's all so my dear students how it works is like this observe if you have a wire okay just imagine you have a wire like this and let's say the charges on it are this way how are the charges distributed they are distributed along a line so this is called as linear charge distribution linear charge distribution and imagine if i take if i take unit length if i take an unit length let's say like this if i take unit length like this on that the total charge is q then that q by l is defined as lambda which is called as linear because it's along a line linear charge density what is it called linear charge density lambda unit will be in coulomb per meter coulomb per meter everybody understanding this particular point okay just put it over here q by l is lambda lambda is the linear charge density of that particular rod because when you solve for that la la uh, rod to find the field lambda will come in the formula lambda will come in the formula similarly similarly if i take a sheet if i take a sheet and let's say it's charged like this okay it's charged like this the sheet is basically charged in this particular manner there is charge distributed everywhere i want to find the field so for that what kind of distribution i would need i would need basically just like it was linear charge distribution here it is aerial along the area aerial charge distribution aerial charge distribution in this case what i will do my dear students is i will take a unit area okay i will just basically take a unit area maybe something like this okay and on that particular unit area i will see how much charge is there so that q by a is called sigma that is also called as surface charge density or aerial charge density okay it's surface or basically area charge density charge density the unit obviously will be 1 coulomb per 1 meter square so coulomb per meter square so that's about area wise charge density is that clear my dear students everybody with me awesome 
लास्ट थिंग वॉट कैन बी द लास्ट थिंग कम ऑन लीनियर चार्ज डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ओवर लैमडा सिग्मा इज एरिया चार्ज डेंसिटी कैन यू थिंक वॉट शुड बी द लास्ट टर्म कैन यू थिंक वॉट शुड बी द लास्ट टाइप ऑफ डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स कम ऑन एवरीबडी शुड बी एबल टू डू दिस Everybody should be able to do this. Come on, my dear students. Yep. Imagine the charges are distributed in that volume. Imagine a piece of cake. Imagine rubber balloon. Imagine a solid sphere. Imagine a rubber ball. Imagine a cube. Imagine. I don't know any 3D object, and the charges are there everywhere. Charges are there everywhere, even inside on the surface. Everywhere you will see the charges are there. Then, in such case, what you do is basically you take a small unit volume. You take a small unit volume, and in that particular unit volume. okay it's not so great but yeah i think it's doable okay so in that particular unit volume you say that the total charge is basically q so in that particular unit volume okay in that particular unit volume you assume that the charge is q so that q by v will be rho it is called as volume charge density volume charge density and the unit obviously will be how much guys it will be coulomb per meter cube because it's volume so that's the last type of charge distribution sigma also done rho also done and lambda is also done this was per unit length what is the charge lambda charge per unit length this was per unit area what is the charge this is per unit volume what is that charge awesome so that's what is there over here as well even in your books so we will be discussing gauss's law in the next class its application in the next class field for sheets line charges as well as spherical shells in the next class for today this is your homework i want everybody to post the answer take a screenshot of this if you want i'm just going to casper myself so that you can take a screenshot and post the answers immediately after the class is over okay so that's about it in today's class i hope you guys had a wonderful time you learned a lot do not forget to leave comments after the class is over to not just mark your attendance for the sake of it i should know you okay say thank you because guys i'm doing this all for you free of cost on youtube so please be thankful but that's the only way the challenge the channel will grow and we will be able to help you so you should understand this is your channel you should feel belonged over here because this is for you this is by you okay so understand that so spam in the comment section i would be reading your answers for the homework question also bye bye thank you for liking thank you for subscribing thank you for recommending this channel and the pdf will be available in the telegram channel bye bye take care have a lovely evening